Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. I want to talk about the value of human life in the Philippines. Um, reality is, people are cheap. Um, you can have people killed from thirty to fifty dollars upwards. Uh, election time, see people murder each other all the time. Um, people are. Uh, people shoot each other over very trivial stuff sometimes um, it's normal um, if you're not used to that environment then I would say it only normally comes around when people are either arguing or there's politics or money involved so if you're not involved with any of those three then generally you're not really going to see anything um, but a friend of mine did experience walking along the road as somebody um, machine gunned the house facing the other way off the back of a motorbike. Um, but that, like I said, that's the election campaign. That sort of stuff's normal. <laughs> you know, it is normal. People don't really report on it much, but it is very, very normal. Automatic weapons are everywhere. There's over a million um, guns unlicensed in the Philippines. So. Bear in mind, there's a lot more, well, probably about the same licensed weapons. It gives you an idea of how many guns there is in the country. More than one. But on the other side of this, there's a lot of stuff that people just don't think about. Um, health and safety is still an obscure thing that people um, don't even look at. I find it very bizarre with people on a motorcycle where they'll have a cross on the key ring, do the old sign of the cross, and then ride off without a motorbike helmet. Myself, I don't wear a motorbike helmet unless I have to, but that's a personal choice. I don't sit there making a sign of a cross and carry um, rosemary beads with the sign of the cross on it um, to keep me safe or anything like that when a helmet would probably do more. <laughs> more um, but that's why I find things strange. People don't seem to worry about it too much until it happens. Then it's all devastation, but then things go back to normal. Um, prime example of that is malaria, uh, dengue fever, typhoid. They're all related to what humans are doing. Um, but the connection between having a dump in your neighbor's lot and throwing your rubbish there and living like an well sorry animals don't do what some people do um doesn't come into it don't come into it at all um i don't even know if it's education because i know a lot of this stuff is actually taught at school um it's a bit like people talking about aquaponics and people growing stuff themselves and recycling water and all this stuff it's all taught in school already People just don't do it. There's, every new building is supposed to have a water butt to collect rainwater, for example. Have you ever seen one? I haven't. Um, we have water containers ourselves, um, but they're deep water wells. We don't actually have any rainwater collection. You know, So maybe I'm as bad as others? I don't know. Um, I'm still... I'm taking it from a deep well, so it's natural water anyway. It's it's not from the water mains. Um, yeah. But then again, I wouldn't need an electric pump if it was on the uh, surface. <laughs> but then again, having water around th that could go stagnant also has a risk with it. So. Yeah, I say there's a lot, yin and yang with a lot of stuff, but people generally don't value life as much as they should do, or they don't see the risks or potential risks. Um, but also killing people. Um, there was a dispute where I was, uh, well, where I live in Minglanilia, between a guy that was a known drug addict, um, he stole somebody's shoes. Another guy suspected him of stealing his motorbike, so he stabbed him um, to the point the guy nearly died on the way to the hospital. Um, the guy that, that stabbed him then had to flee. He didn't get his motorbike back. 
it didn't solve the the missing motorbike but it pretty much destroyed his life because now he's a wanted criminal that's I think he's still on the run at the moment but at the same time short-term thinking and I think that's what most of it comes down to but also the thing with not valuing life so much is partly the fact of overpopulation because I'm not being funny if I was poor and life was pretty hard and going nowhere the last thing I would be wanting to do is create more kids to be born into poverty um, so I don't understand it but I don't know I know there's an old mentality relating to farms where the farms were farmed by families so the more kids you had the easier it was to farm and that was the logic behind it but we're no longer at that day those days anymore um, but people still have huge families um, complicated although I would say the the rise of the middle classes is going on in the Philippines now because of the call centers and the number of kids that the middle classes are having are more in line with the West with reduced numbers so you go into two kids instead of seven or nine um, but yeah it all comes down to value of life because if you've got nine kids and one sick and one dies there's another eight and some people actually use that logic which is why they have so many kids for people that look after them when they're old um, where I'm more inclined to make sure my kids have a future more inclined to make sure my kids are healthy taken care of the last person I care about is myself. Alright, thanks for watching.